we've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, like a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. So good to be with you today. To be able to lift up the name of the Lord and to know that we can call upon His name. I want to direct our attention for the next few minutes into the Word of the Lord. I do believe that as the Word of the Lord so speaks and so directs in our lives, that He is wanting to bring you to a place today to where instead of being overwhelmed, you can experience His victory. I know we have what I call or what I hear as called catch words. And we use them and it's a motivation factor, I suppose, at times. And so we begin to speak these words. We call it words of encouragement or words of strength. Or if we're going to get in front of individuals or people, then we're, we're wanting to almost create, as it were, you know, where we're doing almost like a pep rally. I believe we're not meaning to do that in a wrong way. Or that we're just trying to create an emotion among people only. I certainly do believe that if we're not careful, we will offset what God really intended to be a true desire and witness. I believe that there can be such an exuberance of worship, such an overpowering presence of God, that perhaps it can cause us <clears throat> to just almost be still in His presence. Or it can cause us at a point to feel like we have such a fire that has been ignited within us that we may find ourselves leaping. Or just with such a movement where we feel like we have to, we just can't stand still. I believe that there are such times when God moves and flows in so many ways. <clears throat> but at the same time, I believe if we feel like that the emotion is, the, is part of the presence of God, I believe the presence can move us emotionally. But that the emotion will cause the presence of God to come in. I feel like sometimes our emotion, if we're not careful, will overtake what God is really wanting to move in the place. But we have sort of taken it over for Him to move in his behalf, if you please. And so, in doing all these areas, we'll find that a lot of those areas that we try to fill with so many different things, it can actually create what I feel like could be voids at times. In other words, if we can fill those places while we are with people or leading people, then when we are alone by ourselves, and we're not being such an emotional flow or leading them into this. It's almost like, okay, it's 60 seconds till showtime, if you please. And then it becomes five seconds. And then it's time to go. And all of a sudden, we sort of change gears. And I understand that to a degree. I do. But at the same time, I firmly believe that we need to have a sincere heart. We need to recognize that we are not replacing seeking God with about just a presence that we have motivated in place of God. And now it has become our place of God. And if we're not careful, has it become 
an idol? Has it become where God really doesn't even have to be anywhere around because we have just created such this place when He was around, sort of like making it like as if He were there. And so we now feel like He's there because it sort of feels like what it was when He was there. I trust this is making sense. And where I'm leading to with this is that after a while, we start recognizing now we're trying to work stuff. We're trying to do stuff. Or we just come into the presence and we just sort of say, okay, pastor, you got to move me. you got to motivate me. You've got to put these things in place. Well, we have all of these areas because we can, we can do leadership seminars and we can motivate people and we can teach how to stir them up. But at the same time, are we getting away from God? Are we getting away from Him to the point to where I can do church just as good at home online, if you please? Or I can do church just as good, you know, just because I show up, whether it is when the services are going on. Instead of us recognizing what God is looking at is you and me being the church at all times, wherever we are. And after a while, with everything that is happening in our world today, and I'm telling you, things are happening at such of a fast pace, we can become weary. We can become burdened. We can become where we just feel like, oh God, how are we going to be able to continue this? But Apostle Paul said this, and I just want to bring this to highlight, if I may, and in doing so, that we would be able to see his word, the word of the Lord that Apostle Paul shared to the Galatians or to the Galatia church. Here it says, in the word of the Lord, in Galatians chapter 6, it speaks about different areas. It's just a powerful chapter, which I guess you could pretty much say that through the entire word of God, about it being powerful. Because that's what it says about the word of God. That it is as powerful as a two-edged sword. Correct? Yes. Verse 1 of Galatians 6, brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So we are there to be in assistance and help. But can I tell you, while we see someone being overtaken in a trespass or they're falling by the wayside or you see them and there's many times you can see the road they're going down and you try to bring them back in to where they could be restored. The word of the Lord says here you do it in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. You bring them back in as best you can, but if they do not receive you, it is, it's even where the Lord began to speak as He said to the disciples in Luke chapter 9, and then He also said to 70 others also in Luke chapter 10. He said, I'm sending you out to go to house to house. And He said, if you go there and they receive you, then you share the word of the Lord with them. In other words, you bring that restoration. You release that. You bring that fullness in. But then it says, if they do not receive you, to shake the dust off your feet. And I must tell you, maybe it's easier for others, but for me, that's easier said than done because you don't want to let them go or you don't want to let them continue down the road. But you realize that this has to eventually become between them and God. I don't ever want to have that spirit 
of seeing them later and whatever they go through saying, see, I told you so. No, I want to continue, if I may, with that spirit of gentleness, with that spirit of concern, with that spirit of wanting to bear one another's burdens. Because verse 3 of Galatians 6 says, For if anyone thinks himself to be something, and when he is nothing, he deceives himself, but let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself, and not in another, for each one shall bear his own load. So what we need to do is to examine ourselves we don't need to think us to say wow i get to build everybody up but a lot of people are seeing what's in you or seeing what's in me and if they don't see the lord in us and we're trying to build them up they'll start wondering who are you to tell me who are you to direct me who are you if we are not given the heart of christ if they do not see that vessel, if they do not see an example, we need to be able to give those steps. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm not talking about when they look to you and try to trip you up or when the frustration that they just keep wanting to push the buttons after they learn what to push and you get to a point then they throw it in your face and say, oh, I thought you were a Christian. Oh, I thought I thought you were had it all together and it's amazing, isn't it, at how many scriptures they know, but they only want to throw the scriptures at that would try to tempt you, that would try to cause you confusion. And the word of the Lord says that he will not tempt. Now, he may be, allow us to be tempted, but he said he will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. And even though he will not tempt us, the test can come. He will allow the trials to come. He will allow the walk to where we can show and prove our faithfulness in the relationship we have with Him. That Lord, even though we begin to see, even though like Job said of old, even though the skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. In other words, I can't give up on you, Lord. I can't walk away from you, Father. This fire... Lord, this relationship, this strength. I'm here to encourage once today to tell you when the weariness tries to overtake, God has given us because He said in His Word. Can I continue to read real quick? Because I want to get to verse 9. But I'd like to pick up, if I may, at verse 6. It just says, Let him who is taught the Word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Just looking it up here in the word of the Lord as well. Because there's just a couple of things. Puts down, but there's just a couple of things when you get to his word and his scripture. Where when I was reading this, it just seemed to leap off the page. And I just wanted to open the word back. Instead of what I had set aside. What's a note here. But it just says, and though I'm reading the scripture from that, that I've taken from the word of the Lord, it just says here, it just says, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Think of that. What are you sowing to today? What are you sowing that is reaping in your life? Because it says, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So here's my closing words to us today in verse 9. Let us and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. I know that the world is falling apart. It's not just seeming like. It really is. It seems like that as so many. I'm here to tell you. I know you can find divisions in the world, but it is just very, very rampant, if you please. It is just a divisions among the body of Christ, the believers in the word of the Lord. 
We now are changing so much of His Word and doctrines to fit our walk. Instead of us lining ourselves up into Him to walk in Him, we are lining everything up around us to walk the way we want to walk. It, it doesn't matter if the Word of the Lord speaks in a way that our walk will cause a separation and that our walk will not inherit eternal life. Now, We've gotten so spiritual, it seems, and where we want this word to the degree, but we want it to agree with what we do. And so we find it and we word it and we line it up or we pick certain places instead of taking the entire word of God and we mold it now and shape it to where we justify ourselves and now we have no conscience of the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And we walk with no fear of God any longer. What is going on when we get to that hardness of heart? Yet we're willing to preach it as His Word. We need not to grow weary, dear heart. When you see all these things coming about, lift up your head and know that your redemption draws nigh. We may have to love the people. We keep the spirit of gentleness. We allow the Spirit of God to flow, but we seek for His perfect presence, for His tangible glory, for His fullness in us, not something that is similar to where we call it His presence, as I started out this time together talking and sharing about. And then when we share it, and if... It is not received. We lovingly, even if we have to do it in a tough love, and they want to look at it as you are not with a spirit of God. You're not doing it in a Christian-like way. Let me tell you, even the disciples brought the words to Jesus and said, did you not know you offended the Pharisees and the scribes? Jesus began to speak about where they were in their heartbeat. He was not looking at it from an offense. He was trying to get to them to where they could be set free, where they could be delivered. But they had become just whitewashed. They had become dead skeletal bones. Nothing was moving them. And I believe we have ones get into that place today in my prayers. God, don't let us ever get to that place. Let us stay humble. Let us stay true. Let us stay receptive, Father, to you, to when you show up, we can just say, not my will, but you, if it sends us in a leap, if it sends us where we can't stand still, or if it sends us to our knees, or if it just sends us to where we just have to stop and we can't say any word because of the still, small voice and the stillness of God has just completely captivated the place where we are. And we let go and let God have His way. And we let Him move. So I repeat verse 9 of Galatians 6. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Verse 10, Therefore, as we have opportunity in church, we have opportunity at this moment. Let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. What a word of the Lord today concerning weariness. Not weariness that we can't get away from, but weariness that we can be victors of. And we can, as the word of the Lord just simply said, not grow weary while doing good. Because in due season we shall reap. Somebody just say reap if we do not lose heart. And let us take that word of warning, if. I believe we want to just let our heart say, oh, it'll never happen, church. If we do not guard against it and be that watchman, it can happen because I believe it is happening. To so many, if we are not careful, it can also happen to us. But by His grace, which is sufficient, if we will... As the word of the Lord says, humble, pray. This is in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin 
and will heal their land. That is the spirit of being an overcomer today. May God bless you is my prayer. Now, Father, go with each one. If they don't know you as Savior, let them confess their sins. Lord, let them believe that you died and was buried and rose again. Let them receive you right now. Let it be a relationship. Don't let it just be mere rep rep repetitive words. Let the words sink into our hearts and our lives. I know the words are true, but Lord, let it be when we are able and we leave from this moment together that they realize I'm not the same as I was a moment ago. I really have changed because you said, Lord, that we would become a new creation. You said, behold, all things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Lord, that the, that the old person has died and we have become that new creation. Now, Father, we praise you for it. And Lord, for those through your fire, as you said you would come, John the Baptist said it about you, Jesus, that you would come with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And you sent the promise and Holy Ghost, you're here now. We recognize you are here in this place. Lord, let us through your boldness, let us through your anointing, let us now through your infilling. Lord, as we are baptized fresh and anew day by day of you, Holy Spirit, of the baptism that fills us and overflows as we are directed by you. Amen and amen. God bless you. Today is my prayer till we meet again.